Hi everyone, this is Andy. Welcome back to Med School EU. And in today's lecture, we're going to start talking about photosynthesis. And for this topic, I decided to break it down into two parts because photosynthesis is going to be a lengthy topic. And in the first part, we're going to talk about light absorption reactions. And in the second one, we'll discuss the electron transport as well as the Calvin cycle. So we'll start off with the overview of photosynthesis just to see the process and the significance of it and how it is coupled to cellular respiration. So first of all, let's get a definition. And the definition says that photosynthesis is the use of light energy to convert car carbon dioxide into organic compounds such as carbohydrates. And organic compounds simply mean that it would be carbon bonded to hydrogen. So any compound that contains this sort of bond would be considered an organic compound. And why do we want to produce, why, do, why does photosynthesis produce these organic compounds? Because then in cellular respiration, cellular respiration, respiration so in cellular respiration, when humans and uh, animals use these organic compounds, they actually break down this carbon-hydrogen bond, which releases lots of energy. And this is the significance of plants and other uh, bacteria converting light energy and getting electrons from the water to fixate carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And they use the carbon that is in the carbon dioxide, this carbon right here, they use it to synthesize organic compounds because organic compounds, the backbone of them, is made out of carbon. So what we have here next is the overall equation of photosynthesis. So what we've got is we're going to use six moles of carbon dioxide with six moles of water. So again, we're going to need the hydrolysis of water in order to obtain those electrons from here. And we're also going to take the carbon from the carbon dioxide in order to fixate it to create this organic compound. As you can see, this organic compound has six carbons and 12 hydrogens. So it has plenty of these carbon hydrogen bonds. Therefore, we call it an organic compound. In fact, this is glucose. So the carbon dioxide is going to be reduced. This is a redox reaction. It's going to be reduced into a carbon compound. And in in redox reactions, of course, we also have our oxidation. So this is going to be oxidized. Oxidized. I can't spell today. So water is oxidized to our oxygen. So this is released into the atmosphere and this is stored within the plant cell or, or some bacteria cells. Now, cellular respiration here is the process that it's in reverse. So we, re we take oxygen, we breathe in oxygen, we eat the, the organic compounds, and our products are going to be water and carbon dioxide. And as well, of course, we're going to get lots and lots of ATP because of the breakdown of these carbon-hydrogen bonds. Now, looking at the overall uh, reaction of photosynthesis and, and where it occurs. So let's label this the chloroplast. Chloroplast. As we know, chloroplasts are the photosynthetic apparatuses in plants. So plants have these specialized structures that do not exist on animal cells. Uh, we call them chloroplasts. They have three membranes. So they have the outer, the inner membrane, just like mitochondria, but they also have these stylocoid membranes. In these stylocoid membranes, which we will discuss in great, great detail in this video, we have something called light reactions. And these light reactions are, to, the basis of these light reactions is that they take sunlight and a photon of energy, as we call it, and they're going to use the electron from water because water is going to be oxidized and the electron will be taken up by pigment molecules. And this photon is going to excite the electron and create NADPH and ATP as its, as its products. 
Now this ATP and AD NADPH will be used as energy in order to fixate carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and create our organic compound right there. Now the byproducts, ADP and inorganic phosphate plus the NADP plus will then be used again in the light reactions and the whole cycle will continue to rotate as it's shown here. Now what we're going to take a look at is the details of the light reactions. So let's discuss the photosynthetic apparatus. Where do these light reactions occur and where does the organic compound made? So what we've got is our chloroplast. So this would be the chloroplast, of course, is our photosynthetic apparatus. And uh, if this was a leaf and it has uh, cells, of course, on the surface of it, now these cells, so if we have a cell here, let's draw it on this side. If we have a cell here, and of course the chloroplast is kind of like that, and it has multiple chloroplasts. And what these cells actually have is they have these structures on the membranes in order to do the gas exchange, because we need to allow carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to come into the cell, the CO2 to come into the cell, and the oxygen to exit the cell. Because we are producing oxygen within these chloroplasts and we need carbon dioxide in order to run the photosynthetic apparatus. Now how is it done? Well, it's, it's completed, this gas exchange is completed by structure called stomata. So there we go. We're going to get stomata to uh, all of these little openings within the membranes. They're called stomata and they're going to go through the gas exchange to let in our gases and let out gases that we don't need for the photosynthetic apparatus. Now let's get into labeling our chloroplast. So we have the outer membrane. So outer membrane. We've got our inner membrane, just like the mitochondria. We have the stroma, and stroma is basically the, the cytosol of the organelle. So if, if we have the cytosol of the cell, the inside of it, that's, it's called cytoplasm. Now here, the inside of the organelle is called the stroma. So something similar to mitochondrial matrix, basically. And what we've got is these little sacs. Now, all of these individual sacs are called thylakoids. Thylakoids. And thylakoids, you, you've got the thylakoid lumen. Uh, and thy, thylakoids are stacked in, these, um, in this sort of nature. And this would be called a granum. So the stack of thylakoids... It's called the granum, and the connection between one granum and another with the thylakoid is called a lamella. So what's important and what do we need to know? Well, the light absorbing reactions occur in the thylakoids, in the thylakoid membrane more specifically. So here we can say the reaction uh, light as well as the uh, electron transport. Now, once, once all of this occurs on the thylakoid membrane, the NADPH and the ATP will be moved over to the stroma, and this is where we get our Calvin cycle that will uh, produce the most basic organic compound called G3P, which will then be used to make our organic compounds within the stroma. Before we dive into the thylakoid membrane and actually take a look at the electron transport, we must understand how the atomic structure works uh, when an electron is in its excited state. So here I've got an atom, this is the nucleus, it, it's got its orbits where the electrons are located in. Now what happens is if, if a photon of light, so sunlight, hits directly onto this atom, the electron will be displaced from its ground state. This would be the ground state. 
and it will be moved up to an excited state because it moves to a higher orbit. And if it's further away from the nucleus, it's got more energy. Therefore, it's in its excited state. Now, there's going to be three things that could happen afterwards. One thing would be that the electron will go right back into the ground state. It will return back to the ground state and the energy will be released as heat. So here we got heat or light. So we would see a pigment of light or we would see heat coming off because the electron simply returned back to its uh, normal ground state and the energy will just be given off into the atmosphere as, uh, as heat. Now another scenario, and this is what's extremely important for us to understand, is that the, the electron will return back to its ground state, however the energy will not be simply released as heat. The energy will actually be transferred over to a pigment molecule and a pigment molecule is going to receive this energy and it also has electrons so it's going to excite this pigment so it would have higher energy state of the pigment and we will see this this is actually what occurs within the photosynthetic apparatus on the thylakoid membrane and finally the last scenario that can occur with our photon is that the electron is going to be completely misplaced. So once it goes into a higher orbit, higher energy state, it's going to be completely misplaced out of the atom and it will be, the electron will be accepted by another electron acceptor. And both of these processes occur within the thylakoid membrane and more specifically they occur on the photosystems that we're going to discuss in the next slide. So it's important to note that in photosynthesis, and specifically more in plants, light is absorbed by chlorophylls and keratinoids. So, so these are pigment molecules that give off their natural colors like green, their red, and yellow. For the exam, it's going to be important to know the, the colors that would be absorbed by these pigments. So here we have the keratinoid accepting the wavelength, so this would be in nanometers. Uh, nanometers. So the wavelength of about 475 nanometers right here will be accepted by keratinoids more prominently and they would give off the this light blue color right here and all of the other energy levels so for example if a photon of light comes in at the energy level of 650 nanometers from Sun it's not going to be absorbed by the keratinoid. It will be absorbed by chlorophyll B and chlorophyll A molecule. Now, if we're looking at the chlorophyll A, it's most prominently going to be on about 670 nanometers right here and about 425 nanometers right here. And finally, chlorophyll B will, will have the colors right here with a little bit darker blue as it will absorb this sort of energy the most. And finally let's discuss the real photosystem that occurs on the thylakoid membrane. So this phospholipid, this bilayer is going to be the thylakoid membrane and within this thylakoid membrane we're going to have these giant protein molecules that uh, are called photosystems as they are able to absorb photons of light and use that energy in order to get electrons excited and electrons accepted from water molecules. So here what we've got is our water and we'll see what happens as this water is being oxidized. So let's, uh, let's go through some of the labeling. Here we have one of the structures, here's another structure, here's another structure, and here's another structure. So let's label all of these. First, these uh, white structures that go around on the sides of the protein, these are called antenna complexes. So antenna complex. Now the one, the blue in the middle is called the reaction center. Reaction center. 
and uh, this this one right here this big pigment is going to be our special special pigment molecule and finally the, the the last structure right here is going to be called the primary electron acceptor so primary electron acceptor so what occurs is that the photon of light hits our pigment molecule so all of these little all of these smaller dots in the antenna complex they're called pigment molecules they're not the special pigment molecule they're simply just pigment molecules so and as we have seen in the previous slide pigment molecules are able to accept energy from a photon or or if if an electron is being excited it's going to absorb the energy from that electron as it returns back to its ground state now what occurs is that of course this one receives the energy and it passes it on to the next one and the next one and the next pigment molecule until it ends up in the special pigment molecule and the special pigment molecule could be the chlorophyll so let's label it chlor chlorophyll or carotenoid and this special pigment molecule is going to go through something very unique as the water is going to be hydrolyzed in into oxygen and hydrogen ion and as this oxidation occurs the electron from water is going to be transferred over to the special pigment molecule our chlorophyll now once this chlorophyll is being excited by this energy that is brought in by these pigment molecules from the photon it's going to pass on its electron to the primary electron acceptor because this primary electron acceptor is the most electronegative part of the reaction center so it's going to go through a series of reactions and finally it will be accepted by the primary electron acceptor and finally this primary electron acceptor will pass on the electron to the next photosystem molecule and we are going to see where all of these electrons are being passed down in the photosynthetic electron transport. So this concludes the lecture for this video as we are have completed the light reactions and the light absorption within photosynthesis. And in the next video, we're going to talk about photosynthetic electron transport as well as the Calvin cycle that will produce our organic compound.